So welcome to San Diego Comic Con. I'm yeah. so happy to be here. I'm not going to get to walk the hall or anything, but mm. that's okay, because this is so much fun. No problem. Thank you for uh, being here. And now, uh, 20 years ago, this is the 20th anniversary right now this year of the Kim Possible. When you hear that, what feelings are you bringing up for you? Uh, it makes me feel old. <laughs> But most importantly, it makes me feel very proud of the legacy that Kim Possible has brought to life for so long and for so many generations. Uh, I love that, you know, Will and I are doing a podcast together and he's so very much my Ron Stoppable in life, only much more capable. Um, although arguably Ron Stoppable is pretty, pretty capable. He's pretty fierce. But I've just so enjoyed partnering up with him again and sort of having this camaraderie in our current podcast. And I mean, who knows if a reboot will happen. Happen, but it's time. If you ask me, it's time. Well, you mentioned legacy. What is it about Kim Possible, the character, and the show itself that made it last as long? When you started that project 20 years ago, did you know that it was going to be beloved after all these years? Still, I wouldn't have been able to have the the <laughs> the the sight, the insight into how long Kim Possible would affect people. But I do remember Gary Marsh at the time, who was uh, the president of the channel, had said that he intended for Kim Possible to live on for as long as possible. And uh, I do believe that that it just had. Goods. You know, it has great storytelling. The animation is beautiful and timeless in so many ways, and uh, we're just so proud of it. I never asked you this, but uh, what do you think about Sadie as Kim Possible? I love Sadie. It is adorable, and Sadie was great, and she brought her entire heart to the project. Mm -hmm. And I was so blessed to, you know, have a cameo part in that. And, mm -hmm. You know, I could fit it into my schedule. I have a baby at the time, so I brought my baby, oh, and so. um, I, I, I really enjoyed being a part of it just because. This was the decom that I think the channel wanted to make. Yeah. And I don't think that's the end of the franchise. I definitely think that people are still very excited to come and see a continuation mm -hmm. of Kim Possible, especially it being sort of its 20th anniversary and there being such a, a fandom there. We had we had like a thousand people in a room and we only just announced that we were going to do this panel like, a, I don't know, a month ago maybe. Yeah. So I, I just think that such a wonderful audience. Well, uh, big fan of yours. Oh, thank you. Yeah, so I, I want to ask, because this, this year marks the 20th anniversary of Kim Possible. Yeah. I love that. So what, what feelings does that bring up to you when I, when I mention that? Well, it's this year's the 20th anniversary of Kim Possible, and next year's the 30th anniversary of Boy Meets World. So That's really, right. it just makes me feel old. <laughs> um, <laughs> I always say I'm doing. I'm, I'm currently on the Wilfredells old tour. Uh, it's a great tour. It ends at 4:30 in the afternoon. Um, no, I, it's it's been phenomenal. I mean, the, the the fact that to be involved in anything that lasts um, is pretty great. But to be involved in two things that have lasted have been just such an honor for me. So, uh, but Kim Possible is is will always have just such a special place in my heart. And and you know, introduced me to one of my closest friends in Christy Carlson. And and uh, so it's. Yeah, pretty amazing that people and the new the new generations watching it will come to conventions and somebody three or four years old will come up dressed like impossible. I mean, it's the coolest thing in the world. It really is. I want to piggyback on that. Uh, tell me about your uh, years-long collaboration with uh, Christy. Now you're podcasting with her as well. What's the secret to this lifelong friendship between you and Christy? Um, I think it's a combination of respect and not taking ourselves too seriously. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we're, we're, we just want to have fun. We, we both love talking to people and going to conventions and meeting fans. And we both love the animation world and the voiceover world. And, and with I Hear Voices, we were, were able to kind of give the voiceover world to other people. So uh, we're very excited about that. Tell my fans about your iHeart project. Yes, so uh, I Hear Voices has just partnered up with the iHeart Media, yeah. um, which is the greatest thing in the world. And we are able to announce uh, a something pretty special, which we've wanted to do for a while now, and iHeart has given us the opportunity to do, where we are conducting a nationwide search to find the next big voiceover actor. So um, if you think you've got what it takes, we, we like to say, if you, you think you can do this, well, put your voices where your mouth is. Um, so uh, yeah, we will uh, be scouring the country, and the winner, uh, we can announce some of the prizes, not all of them, but uh, the winner's going to be flown out to LA and uh, have lunch with Christy and I, and at that lunch, we'll get a chance to meet their brand new voice voiceover agent because uh, they will be signing with my voiceover agency, CESD, the biggest, best voiceover agency in the country, uh, and get uh, representation. So it is a chance for us to find an amateur voiceover actor and bring them into uh, the big leagues. Can't final, wait. Final, final, real quick. I got friends who are actors and they always believe that you know voice acting is a dream come true because it's steady employment. I mean, what, what's your advice to them? What can they look out for? 
Well, the advice is to can, is, is study acting because everybody thinks that, oh, I can do voices and that means I can be a voiceover actor. It's all about acting. Mm. Um, the voices come and you can learn the voices, but the acting is the important thing. So study the craft of acting. Uh, that every, every aspect of it, from improv to Shakespeare to what you name it, study it. Because um, it all helps at the end uh, uh, in voiceover. So uh, that would be my advice. And then I would say enter the contest.